Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a little worried we're asleep already. Let's try it one more time. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Un Misericordia University Winter 2017 Commencement Ceremony. I ask that you please remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Sister Carol Gallagher, a Sister of Mercy and a member of the university's Board of Trustees. After the invocation, please continue to stand for the national anthem, which will be led by Misericordia University students, faculty, and staff, accompanied by Assistant Professor of Fine Arts and pianist, Dr. Ryan Weber. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a happy accident that this day of celebration, graduation day, falls on the third Sunday of Advent, a day of joy and glad tidings. The scripture readings today are replete with images of joy. And these images and themes resonate with the emotions of our hearts. As we pause to pray in gratitude for the abundance and joy of this day, I ask you to reflectively consider what gift you can offer during this season of Christmas. What candle can you light? And so we pray, may God bless you with the wisdom to make wise choices, always confident in the unwavering support of those you love you. May God bless you with an understanding that the fulfillment of your deepest, purest desires is God's plan for you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will always live deeply in your heart. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world so that you will do the things others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity in word and deed be a gift to the world and may the paradoxically unsettling and liberating spirit of God be with you today and those you love always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
It is my pleasure at this time to introduce the president of Misericordia University, Dr. Thomas Boatsman. Dr. Boatsman. Well, good afternoon. You get a little better. We're going to keep practicing. On behalf of the administration of Misericordia University, I would like to welcome the families and friends who have joined us for our ceremony today, as well as our honorees, trustees, esteemed faculty, staff, alumni, special guest Father Herbert Keller, interim president of the University of Scranton, as we celebrate and recognize the class of 2017. Graduates, I offer you a recommendation. Take time to acknowledge the love and counsel you have received from family, friends, faculty, classmates, and other people who have supported you during your time at Misericordia University. I encourage you to use your excellent interpersonal skills, cultural awareness, and empathy as you progress through your careers and your personal lives. The Sisters of Mercy taught us the value of positive, productive relationships for the betterment of others, a distinction that is infused into the Misericordia University experience at every level. To make it this far in your studies at Misericordia, you most assuredly displayed our university's core values of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality in your words and deeds, continuing a long-standing tradition. We are very proud of each one of you. Thank you and congratulations. Now, I would ask Christopher Borton, Chair of our Board of Trustees, to join me at the podium for the awarding of the honorary degrees. Good afternoon. President Boatsman, it is my pleasure to present to you Ms. Elizabeth Lisa Fontanelli, so that you may bestow upon her the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. <laughs> Elizabeth Lisa Fontanelli. As a lifelong supporter of the work of the Sisters of Mercy and as an accomplished business professional in the global financial industry, you have distinguished yourself as one who shares our core values of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality. You earned a dual Bachelor of Science degree from the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications and the School of Management at Syracuse University in 1986 and currently serve on the Advisory Council of the Whitman School of Management at Syracuse. Recently retired, after a 30-year career, you joined Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs in 1992 and were appointed to the Global Research Management Team in 2000. You assumed the role of Divisional Chief Administrative Officer in 2005 and were named Chief Operating Officer of the Division in 2007. You were named Managing Director in 2003 and Partner in 2006. Immediately prior to your retirement, you served as Deputy Head of Global Investment Research, overseeing all equity and credit, credit research globally. Your connection to the Mercy tradition began as a student of the Sisters of Mercy at St. Mary Academy in Lakewood, New Jersey. You are a supporter of the Mercy Center and Sisters Academy of Mercy Center and Sisters Academy in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and have been a sponsor of the Mercy Girls Rising Project for more than 10 years. Through the program, young women attend the Mercy Leadership Conference each June where they have the opportunity to hone skills in leadership and collaboration and learn how to use education as a tool to help eradicate global poverty. In 2016, 
You completed 12 years of service as trustee at Georgian Court University, founded in 1908 by the Sisters of Mercy in Lakewood, New Jersey, where you shared your business knowledge and leadership abilities to advance the cause of higher education. Lisa Fontanelli, for your extensive professional accomplishments and stalwart support of the works of the Sister of Mercy over many decades, it is our pleasure to honor you today. And so by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Misericordia University, I do hereby confer upon Elizabeth Lisa Fontanelli the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereto appertaining. Good afternoon and congratulations. What a pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, deep and abiding gratitude and quiet service are my counterbalance to the abundance of good fortune in my life. I am deeply grateful to Misericordia University, President Boatsman, and the Board of Trustees for bestowing this honor. I am humbled to be in the company of Father Jim Martin in this honor. I have been blessed with amazing parents, family, and dear friends who set my path and every day guide me in pursuit of goodness. To today's graduates, thank you for who you are, for all you've already accomplished and all you have yet to become. If I may share a brief reflection on commencement or any time when as today, you celebrate achievement and begin again Begin again, aim high, work hard, fail, learn, begin again. Pray, hope, show mercy, ask questions, trust God, begin again. Love well, give thanks, farewell, Godspeed. Thank you, Dr. Fontanelli. <laughs> President Boatsman, it is my pleasure to present to you Father James Martin. <laughs> so that you may bestow upon him the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Father James Martin. As a Jesuit priest, editor-at-large of America Magazine, and best-selling author, you have made a positive impact on the lives of thousands of people around the world. A native of Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania, you have earned a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business. After working for six years in corporate finance, you entered the Society of Jesus in 1988, later earning a master's degree in divinity and another in theology from the Boston College School of Theology and ministry prior to your organization in 1999. During your Jesuit novitiate and subsequent regency assignment, you worked directly with marginalized people around the world in setting such in settings such as a hospice for the sick and dying in Jamaica, at a homeless shelter in Boston, at a school for the inner city boys in New York City. 
You worked in an outreach program with street gang members in Chicago housing projects and spent nearly two years in Nairobi, Kenya, where you helped Eastern African refugees start small businesses. As the author and editor of several award-winning books, including a New York Times bestseller, you are well respected for your compassionate insights into religion and society. Your articles and essays appear in some of the, most, of the world's most leading periodical publications, including the Boston Globe, the Wall Street Journal, the Chicago Tribune, and Time Magazine, among others. Some of our guests may recognize you from your appearance on television, including NPR, CNN, the BBC, the History Channel, and even Comedy Central. Earlier this year, Pope Francis appointed you as a consular to the Vatican's Secretariat for Communication. On Sundays, you can be found assisting at the Church of St. Ignatius Loyola in New York City. Father James Martin, you are a caring, motivated leader who empathizes compassion and mercy in the pursuit of your faith while you skillfully utilize your abilities as a world-class communicator. We are delighted to be able to honor you today. And so, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Misericordia University, I do hereby confer upon Father James Martin, Society of Jesus, the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereto appertaining. First of all, thanks to President Boatsman and the Board of Trustees for this great honor. I'm not sure if you know this, but by tradition, I and Ms. Fontanelli are now members of the class of 2017. So my fellow graduates, I look forward to seeing you at our 50th reunion <laughs> when you will be a spry 71 and I will be 106, <laughs> so please be nice to me. I am honored, really honored, to be recognized by such a wonderful university and one that has embraced its identity as a school of mercy, justice, service, and hospitality so fully, and that continues its legacy as a work of the Sisters of Mercy who are the reason that we are all here, thanks to the remarkable women who founded this school. So I'm proud to be a fellow graduate and share in that merciful spirit with you. Speaking of sharing, I would like to very briefly share with you, my fellow graduates, a few things that I wish I had known at your age. Six things that would have made my life a lot easier. Some are pieces of advice from wisdom figures. Others are the result of dumb mistakes. And I'm serious. If you put them into action, you'll be a lot happier. So here goes. Number one. The first is actually three things that go together. One, you're not God. Two, this isn't heaven. Three, don't be a jerk. That last one I cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> so, you're not God. Stop trying to do everything, to fix everything in your life and everyone else's, and to make everything perfect. 
You can't. Why? Because you're not God. So stop acting as if you were God. As the saying goes, there's good news and there's better news. Do you know this one? The good news is there is a Messiah. The better news is it's not you. <laughs> Second part, this isn't heaven. Try not to expect life to be perfect. Once you realize that, you'll be able to enjoy your life more and you'll be more grateful and you'll complain less, which means that you won't annoy your friends as much. Finally, don't be a jerk. Okay, you have the flu, you've lost your cell phone, your laptop got stolen, your boyfriend or girlfriend just dumped you, you had a fight with your parents, your car broke down, your first job after misericordia isn't exactly working out like you hoped. Okay, you can be sad, disappointed, or angry, and you can share your struggles with friends, but don't pass on your anger. Just because you're upset doesn't mean that you have to act like a jerk. Number two, you really can be your best self. Look, God has already made you a wonderful creation. Each of you are a wonderful creation of God. But God's not finished with you yet. How can you tell? Well, because I'm sure right now, you all sitting there have an idea of the person that you would like to become someday, right? Maybe next year or in five years or in 10 years. Maybe freer, more spontaneous, more loving, more forgiving, or more merciful. That's a call. That desire is a call from God to become the person that you're meant to be. Listen to that desire to become that person. And even if you can't be that person right now, you can move towards that by acting as if you were that person. To make good and healthy decisions, ask yourself, what would my best self do? Start acting as if you were your best self, and soon you will find you have become that person. Three, you can't force people to approve of you, agree with you, be impressed with you, love you, or even like you. So stop trying. You know, I spent most of my time in college and then most of my 20s trying to get everyone to like me, which was impossible. No matter what you do, some people will approve of you, others won't. No matter how nice you are, some people will take to you and others won't. I mean, everyone didn't like Jesus, and he was a pretty nice guy. So just relax and accept the fact that some people will like you and others will not. It will save you a ton of heartache, trust me. Four, be yourself. Stop trying to be someone else. You know, you often think, boy, if only I were like that person or this person. That's who I wish I were. But you're meant to be yourself. And whenever you compare yourself to someone, you usually compare what you see as falsely as their perfect life, again, that's false, with what you know is your not so perfect life. And guess what? Your life always loses out. It's a rigged game. Thus the old Jesuit saying, compare and despair. Look, you are a beautiful creation of God, each of you. And being holy means being you, not being another person. Man or woman, rich or poor, black, brown or white, short or tall, gay, straight, lesbian or transgender, you are all beautiful people. Remember, God doesn't make crap, as Jesus said. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> Five, even when you realize what the right thing to do is, it's still hard. You know, I used to think, well, once you realize the right thing, all you have to do is do it. Not at all. It's hard to do the right thing. You're out at a party, and everyone starts to make fun of a friend of yours. It's hard not to join in. You're out with friends, and everyone starts talking about how lazy poor people are. It's hard not to join in. You're at work, and everyone's doing something that's slightly unethical. 
It's hard not to participate. It takes a lot of guts not to. It's easy to see what the right thing to do is, but it's hard to do. Here's the trick. Do it anyway. Otherwise, you won't be able to live with yourself, and eventually, it will catch up with you. Finally, six, be merciful. You know, one of the great things about graduating from Misericordia is this. For the rest of your life, you are going to be reminded of mercy, of misericordia, every time someone asks you where you went to school, every time you meet a classmate, every time you go to an event, and of course, every time that the fundraising office sends you a letter, <laughs> which they will do frequently. Now, mercy, as you know, is the theme of Pope Francis's papacy. But more importantly, it's the theme of Jesus's public ministry. And that has to do with charity and love, of course, as Jesus shows us. But there's something else to it. A Jesuit moral theology professor named Jim Keenan once wrote that mercy is, I find this so beautiful, entering into the chaos of another person's life. That's what Jesus did when he reached out to all those on the margins, tax collectors, prostitutes, the sick, people who were dealing with a host of issues. And when Jesus met people who were considered to be other, he spent time with them, listening to them, asking them questions, just getting to know them, entering into their lives. That's also what blessed Catherine McCauley did the foundress of the Sisters of Mercy. You probably know how she spent all of her inheritance in order to found her first House of Mercy in Dublin in 1827, a place to shelter and educate women and girls. She entered into the chaos of their lives. That's what you are meant to do now as you enter the world with the word misericordia emblazoned on you to be merciful, to enter into other people's lives, and yes, their chaos. If a friend calls and says that they're suddenly in the hospital or their mother or father suddenly died, you know it's going to be a messy situation. Hospitals, funeral homes, sickness, tears, confusion. You are called to enter into all that because that's where people, that's where your friends most need you in those messy, chaotic times. And I didn't know that when I was your age. I thought life was about making your own life as comfortable as possible, and when others needed help, I'd sort of, you know, stay away and offer support, but hope that their problems went away. I was sympathetic, but I didn't want to make, do anything that made my own life more messy. But that is not what misericordia is. When you feel someone in need, even if it's overwhelming or chaotic or confusion, and whether it's someone in your family or in your circle of friends or at work or someone you've never met, enter into their chaos and give them some misericordia. And don't worry, God will help you. God is the source of all mercy, of all misericordia. My fellow cougars, I can't give you money since I'm a Jesuit priest and take a vow of poverty. I can't give you any more advice since I promised President Boatsman that I would be brief and Jesuits take a vow of obedience. <laughs> and I certainly can't give you a kiss since we take a vow of chastity, too. But I can give you those few pieces of advice, and I guarantee that even if you remember only one of them, you will be happier, because you deserve to be happy. Why? not only because you are all beloved children of God, but today, on top of that, you are something really special, Misericordia graduates. Thank you, and as Jesus said, go Cougars.
Thank you, Father, Dr. Martin. We appreciate your thoughtful words and very, very inspirational message. Thank you very much. At this point in the ceremony, we're about to focus specifically on you, our graduating students. First, the university has recognized those students who have been inducted into honor societies. I'd like to bring to your attention the names of these students and the honor societies into which they have been inducted. They are listed in today's program. And now, we will present the diplomas to the graduates, after which the degrees will be conferred by President Boatsman. President Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Arts. In biology, Sabrina Grace Velasco. Kaylee Crockett, magna cum laude. Justin Joseph Forbes. Mitchell Joseph Haney, magna cum laude. Tyler Todd Huniera. Andrea Michelle Nail, magna cum laude. Nicole M. Palanza, cum laude. Damien Peter Perantoni, cum laude. Christopher S. Rarig, magna cum laude. Justin M. Scheib, summa cum laude. Gregory Schultz, magna cum laude. Kayla Stephanie, summa cum laude. Jacob Neil Stone. Gerald Joseph Struble, magna cum laude. In communications, Michael C. Gambita. In English, Gabriela Lamana, cum laude. In government, law and national security, Randall Compton Davis. Isaiah K. Harvey. Matthew James McGuigan, cum laude. Aliyah Janelle Moore. Robert Theodore Sitkowski. In history, Timothy Daniel Ford. Kimberly Elizabeth Morrow. In Medical and Health Humanities, Bethany May Flanders. In Philosophy, 
Brandon Eric Dean, also receiving a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, cum laude. Dr. Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Accounting. Francesca Carinante. <laughs> Beth Ann Cottle, summa cum laude. <laughs> James Egan. <laughs> Melanie Jane Fry, also receiving a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, magna cum laude. Alyssa Maria Gallis, magna cum laude. Alicia Jambra, magna cum laude. Tony Marie Zaleski, summa cum laude. In applied behavioral sciences, Sarah Elizabeth Gowett. Allison Patrice Hodge. Sarah Ann Kreidler, magna cum laude. Jamie Lynn Nissen. Christy L. Rice. Laura Lynn Ruchinski, magna cum laude. In biochemistry, Rachel A. McCormick, summa cum laude. In biology, Atasha Lynn Rarig, cum laude. In business administration, Theodore Robert Alibar, summa cum laude. Emily Taylor Berger. Macho Alberto Cartagena. Dana Catherine Cutler. Mariah Lynn Ebert, magna cum laude. Carissa R. Flick, summa cum laude. Joseph G. Forgotch, cum laude. Jacob D. Klein, summa cum laude. Jake D. Kukowski, cum laude. Joseph Anthony Lewandowski, summa cum laude. Bradley Christopher Miller, cum laude. Great. Kristen Oganowski. Stephanie Ann Oliverio, magna cum laude. Anthony J. Panico. Lauren Elizabeth Peretti, cum laude. <clears throat> Michael Allen Pegarella, Sr. Sarah Jessica Pizer, cum laude. Mackenzie L. Ruffing, summa cum laude. 
Amy Elizabeth Sokol, cum laude. Haley Lynn Stock, magna cum laude. Sarah Elizabeth Stevens, summa cum laude. Olivia Samariski, magna cum laude. Jacob John Stachina, magna cum laude. Alexander William Turco, cum laude. Emma Lauren Weber, cum laude. Zodian? Gregory Zodian. <clears throat> In clinical laboratory science, Rukhaya Alheji. In computer science, Nicole Grassi, summa cum laude. Joseph E. Gretsch. Robert L. Heft III, also receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics, magna cum laude. In early childhood education and special education, Michelle Nicole Melody, summa cum laude. Allison Rosselli, cum laude. In healthcare management, Allison Elise Amos, magna cum laude. Brittany Nicole Cresswell. Anthony Edward Delicio, Jr., magna cum laude. Trevor James George, cum laude. Margaret L. Martin, magna cum laude. Kyle Allen Reese. Tristan J. Snyder. Brandon M. Winslow, magna cum laude. Robert Wozniak, Jr. In health science, Marguerite L. Connor, cum laude. In information technology, Suad Isa Al Mumin. In mathematics, Michael John Gottstein, cum laude. In medical imaging, Shelby Lane Ariscavage, cum laude. Doreen M. Hossage. Stephanie Marie Cashelrees, cum laude. Ashley Elizabeth Klein. Brianna Marie Mosier. Blair Elizabeth Melhauser, magna cum laude. Brielle Ann Schuster. In medical science, Sean Thomas Lutzi, cum laude. In professional studies, Robin Marie Belvedere.
Suzanne J. Bowman, summa cum laude. Laura M. Geraldo Walker. Jacqueline Faye Kirkwood. Kimberly L. Flick, magna cum laude. Heather Lee Pilkavage. Patrick Ruan. Tammy G. Schnabel, magna cum laude. Jesse Morgan Solom. In psychology, Colby Wheeler Charlier. Victoria Page Sizak, magna cum laude. Aaron Michelle Duvinsky. Juliana Marie Ferry, magna cum laude. Rebecca Ann Fiorillo, magna cum laude. Ariana Marie Gagliardi, magna cum laude. Emily Brianne Gonzalez, cum laude. Jordan Hazel Hoffman. Crystal Ann Morris, magna cum laude. James Severin Peterson II. Alexandra. Rigo. Alexandra Noel Rigo, magna cum laude. Amanda Marie Sheehan, magna cum laude. In sport management, Donald Bender. Mark D. McMaster. President Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Mary Cheryl Coloso. <laughs> Melissa Ann Zock. Kelly Ann. Kelly Ann Fraser. Natalie Salucci Heron. Michelle Jade Maxuga. Brenda Ortega. Evelyn Charmini Sirisani. President Boatsman, the following candidate has completed the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Social Work, William N. Faust. The following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Master of Business Administration, Rachel Julia Baker. Caitlin Brasowski. Nicole A. Callender. Ryan Michael Carey. Tommy Marie Krigo. Tracy Gavlik Hall. 
Danielle. Great. Danielle E. Prafke. Tammy R. Prinzo. Joan Danielle Rosansky Reed. It's Ian, right? Ian P. Silkworth. President Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Master of Science. In Education, Kelsey Marie Cameron. <laughs> Stephanie Rose de Reamer. Jessica Ann Hotz. Ashley Elizabeth Jevon. Melissa Kerwin. Crystal Marie Novak. Jack Thomas Port. Lara Lynn Romanowski. In healthcare informatics. Sarah K. Davis. In organizational management, Lee Ann Chamberlain. Francis Joseph Dombrowski III. Megan L. Jackson. Carrie Ann Keller. Dana Rose Middleton. Kylie M. Patterson Carr. Lizette C. Pena. Melissa Lee Spinden. Adriana Rhodes Vullo. Kelly Zaltalskis. President Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Master of Science in Occupational Therapy. Terry Bugelhole. Caitlin Michelle Dillo. Wilfredo Lazarus Dones, Jr. Naomi P. Fleury. Lemire Ross. Dominique Lemire Ross. <laughs> Lindsay Ion McGreevy. <laughs> Rebecca Hewitt Pickle. President Bozeman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Doctor of Nursing Practice. Amy Nicole Austin. Casey Lee Barasek. Linda Brennan Borenstein. Gabriela Maria Cesare. Jennifer Lynn Di Virgilio. Patricia. Patricia Maria Rodriguez Hudson. Yeah. 
Victoria Romano. Jennifer Lynn Zimmerman. Catherine M. Zorowski. President Boatsman, the following candidates have completed the requirements for the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy. <laughs> Jessica Anderson. <laughs> Luke Atkins. Alexander J. Baer. Aaron Thomas Blank. Kyle Bradley. Joshua Joseph Brennan. Connor James Campbell. Ryan Patrick Cannon. John T. Chillo. Alexa Crowley. Mara Nicole Donoski. Jeffrey C. Dittmer. Dana Ellen Ehlers. Rebecca Elizabeth Evangelista. Taylor Marie Fury. Emily Paige Gergel. Anthony Goodall. Rachel Ann Harding. <laughs> Catherine Hefner. <laughs> Aubrey Rose Heggie. <laughs> Kelsey Elaine Heller. <laughs> Danielle Elizabeth Hessler. Hindman Hindman. Rebecca Kate Hindman. Jason Thane Hunter. Sarah Elizabeth Hurley. Elizabeth Joanne Jackson. Katarina Marie Kindig. <laughs> Megan J. Lanigan. Lemoncelli, like singing. Thank you. <laughs> Megan Lemoncelli. <laughs> Alyssa Lauren Lieberman. Thomas Joseph Machi. <laughs> Mia Marie Mancuso. <laughs> Heather Marie Marcico. <laughs> Kayleen Ann Metzger. Jonna L. Miller. <laughs> Juliana Marie Mucaro. <laughs> Julianne Margaret Munda. <laughs> Brian.
Brooke Ashley North. Robin K. Odell. Jacqueline Pearson. Alexander M. Pereira. Jessica Lynn Petz. Alexa Anne Tleviak. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Rab. <laughs> Sean P. Reed. <laughs> Andrew Reynolds. Natalie A. Ruiz. <laughs> Melinda Labar Russell. <laughs> Rachel Ann Scanlon. <laughs> Mary K. Shea. Jeffrey Douglas Smith. <laughs> Megan M. Smith. <laughs> Bradford Thomas. <laughs> Christopher Craig Tiffany. Benjamin Torres. Corinne Elizabeth Walker. Danica Watto. Alexa Elizabeth Yoder. Aaron Zimmerman. How are you doing? Okay. Just waiting to clear the pictures over there. Yeah, they're going, and I slowed down at the end to allow them to talk. I think we're good. So now that you, gra you almost graduates have gotten comfortable being seated, will you please rise? Dr. Boatsman is Vice President of Academic Affairs of Misericordia University. I present to you this illustrious class of 2017 and recommend that you confer upon them the degrees for which they have successfully completed all requirements. Dr. Boatsman. Class of 2017, are you ready? That was pretty good. Families and friends, are you ready? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Misericordia University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you completed all the requirements as determined by the faculty and the department in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto per pertaining. 
Congratulations, Class of 2017. And now, graduates, to make this really official, if you haven't already done so, switch your tassels from right to left. Congratulations, and you may be seated. <clears throat> it is now my pleasure to introduce the student speaker for the winter commencement class of 2017, Michelle Melody. She is an early childhood and, and special education major from Naples, Florida, with a mere 3.99 GPA. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Melody. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am extremely honored to be the student speaker for this commencement ceremony. I would like to congratulate my fellow graduating students, and I would like to thank our family, our friends, the President of Misericordia, Dr. Thomas Boatsman, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Christopher Borton, members of the board, officers, faculty, and staff for attending our winter commencement. I would first like to take a moment to thank all of you who have gotten us here. Professors, we thank you for your hard work and dedication to us throughout our time at Misericordia. Since Misericordia is a smaller, more intimate university, we have gotten to know our professors and each other very well. Thank you for supporting us and imparting your skills, knowledge, and wisdom unto us. Family and friends, thank you for your continuous support and love. We would not be here today without your lifelong guidance and belief in us. We can never thank you all enough for helping us reach this significant moment in time. Earning this degree is a pivotal moment in our lives. However, getting a degree from Misericordia means a little bit more. We have not only grown in our academic knowledge, but we have grown in our character. As we all know, Misericordia has its four charisms, mercy, service, justice, and, and hospitality. These four charisms have guided us through our time here at Misericordia, and we have always been encouraged to embody them. Misericordia, founded by the Religious Sisters of Mercy. Sister Kathleen McCauley once said that we, as humans, should strive to do ordinary things extraordinarily well. I encourage us all to do this. Even if our acts of mercy are as simple as holding the door open for someone, which we all do here as a community at Misericordia, even if that means holding the door open for several minutes until the next person gets there, I encourage us to continue to do this small act. Even small acts of kindness can become a chain reaction. Be the person who starts and continues these chains of kindness. Although we have now changed our role from students to alumni of Misericordia, I hope that we can all keep the spirit of Misericordia in our hearts as we begin a new journey. Misericordia is a tight-knit community. I know that we will all miss Misericordia, our lifelong friends that we have made, our professors, staff, and members of the community. I will particularly miss driving through the arch every day and gazing upon our beautiful campus. I will always look back at my time at Misericordia as a period of happiness, security, and growth. I challenge us to continue Misericordia's four charisms throughout our lives and in whatever career choice that we may have made. As a future teacher, I hope to instill the core values that Misericordia has taught me into the next generation. So, let us be the embodiment of mercy, 
service, justice, and hospitality. Let us show mercy through compassion, love, and care. Service through selflessness, sacrifice, and action. Justice through fairness, acceptance, and advocacy. And hospitality with dignity, respect, and openness. So, fellow graduates, congratulations on all of your achievements and accomplishments that are being honored today. You have worked very hard to get to this point and should all be very proud of yourselves. I encourage us to not only use our degree for our career, but to also keep steady the core values that Misericordia has taught us. Let us be, like Catherine McCauley said, shining lamps, giving light to all around us. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, Adam Gretsch, a member of the Alumni Association Board of Directors, will preside over the induction of the new graduates into the Misericordia University Alumni Association. Adam. President Boatsman, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Alumni Association Board of Directors, faculty, staff, graduates of Misericordia University, family, friends, honored guests. My name is Adam Grzeck, and I am graduate of the class of 2013 and 2017. I am also a member of the Misericordia University Alumni Association Board of Directors. It is my distinct honor and privilege today to welcome the class of 2017 into the Alumni Association. Congratulations to you all. Today, like so many others across this nation, the people in this room are graduating with bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Like so many, after today you will be entering the workforce, looking for jobs, or pursuing more advanced degrees. Unlike so many others, the degree you hold in your hand says misericordia. It is a word on your diploma that brings value and enhancement to your field of study. It also brings a higher ideal. That ideal is often summarized into the charisms of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality. It is what makes you, the graduates, along with over 18,000 alumni, truly unique. This uniqueness comes with a duty and a responsibility to you, your families, your communities. This duty and responsibility is to hold on to the charisms of the university as you venture into the vast ocean of life. In that ocean, you will be challenged to stay steady and be the stone, however small, that when cast into that ocean, creates a ripple that changes the world. I now ask all members of the class of 2017 to please stand. In accordance with the bylaws of the Misericordia University Alumni Association, and by the authority vested in me by that association, I hereby declare the graduates of the class of 2017 to be life members of the Misericordia University Alumni Association. And I beseech you to be and to remain loyal supporters of this university, which send you forth this, the 17th day of December, 2017, to better serve yourselves, your professions, your community, your country, and your God. You may now proudly call yourselves alumni of Misericordia University. Congratulations and welcome.
We're about to do the alma mater. Before we begin the alma mater, we ask that you remain, all of you, in your seats until the stage party and the academic procession reach the back of the arena. Graduates and your guests are cordially invited to the reception in the Banks Student Life Center lobby. For all here, as you exit the Anderson Center, we beg of you, please do not stop at the door to congregate, as this will in fact delay the exit for all the remaining guests. If you've agreed upon a place to meet family and friends, please proceed directly there at a distance from this building, well beyond the entrance and across Misericordia Way. You get the point. Now, please rise for the singing of the alma mater printed on page 37 of your program. To conclude our ceremony, Monsignor John Bendick, a member of our Board of Trustees, will deliver our benediction. Monsignor. I offer my congratulations to you also, and your grandparents will probably understand how I rephrase what I'm about to say. It's not over till the fat Monsignor sings. <laughs> Let us bow to our heads and pray for God's blessing.
May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in paradise a shining name. May you always serve one another. May you as they work for justice and peace. May God bless you and grant you long lives. May he guide you through troubles and strife. and defend you. May God grant you mercy and grace. Favor them, O oh Lord, with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our grateful Bless you.